everybody. Um, my name is Angie Grove. I'm the executive director here at the Ethan Allen Homestead Museum. And I welcome you today to our monthly lecture series. So we do a monthly lecture um, 11 months of the year open to the public. And starting this year, we're going to have a December lecture for members only. So that is um, your opportunity to join our membership if you'd like to come to our December lecture um, for the members only. And this December, the lecture is actually going to be me um, speaking about uh, uh, people who hated Ethan Allen during the 18th century. Uh, so if you're interested in that, you'll definitely want to stop at be a our long talk, register I think, on your way out <laughs> later today and purchase a membership so you can join in for that fun. And that is Angela right there. She's our membership chair, so she can answer any questions about membership as well. So um, the Ethan Allen Homestead Museum is a small nonprofit community museum, and so we do rely on those memberships um, as well as private donations from our community members, as well as corporate sponsorship. So I do want to direct your attention up to the board so that we can thank the sponsors of our community enrichment programs. So the sponsors this season are North Country Community Credit Union, M&T Bank, and AARP Vermont, as well as our partnership with uh, Town Meeting TV or CCTV. Um, and you can see Kate in the back of the room right there, who's recording this program so that uh, people can watch it later as well and we can reach a larger audience. We also have an audience that is on Zoom right now. Um, and so, hello to all of those people, too. And um, so we're at the end of the lecture when we do the Q&A, we'll kind of try to go back and forth between live audience members and online members for that portion as well. Okay. Uh, did I miss anything for logistics? Okay. Um, if, you, if you need bathrooms, they're out that way on the other side of the canoe, and um, there is an emergency <laughs> exit at the back of the store if we, if we need it as well. Okay, safety concerns are dealt with. So I'm gonna uh, turn the stage over to one of our board members. I already kind of introduced her as our membership chair, Angela Moody. She's also been um, a board member since 2017. 17. Yeah, 2017. And she's also um, her own, she's a historical researcher and author and she has written a couple of historic fiction books that we do sell in our gift shop. So she um, would love to tell you more about those after the talk if you're interested in historic fiction novels. And she's gonna be introducing our speaker today, so could you please help me welcome our wonderful board member, Angela Moody. Well, don't clap for me, because I'm here to introduce Niels, who is doing our talk today. Uh, Niels has worked in archaeology in the Northeast and in New England for 25 years in different capacities. He's lived in Vermont since 2012, so he's not quite a Vermonter yet, but we'll give him some time. Uh, he went to work for the Vermont Department of Forest Parks and Recreation and Lands Administration. Let's say that fast. He's now the Historic Resources Direct, uh, Coordinator for the FPR, and he's managing the consulting consultation process with the Vermont District, I'm sorry, with the Vermont Division for Historic Preservation, which brought him here to the homestead. Um, and those are all projects which are on state lands. Um, in this capacity, he makes sure that FPR is in compliance with federal and state laws governing historic preservation, and he's recently begun work with the Ethan Allen Homestead Museum to help us organize and catalog, categorize and catalog uh, the historic artifacts that are in our, in our storage units um, that they had done when they first started renovating and um, digging up the artifacts around the, the home. Um, Niels is also a writer, and he enjoys writing essays and short stories, and I'm grabbing him when this is over so we can talk stories. <laughs> right, <great. laughs> Welcome, Niels. Thank you. Oh, sorry. I'm worried about this right here. I don't want to trip. And, oh, there, I already did it. Shall I go? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I forgot to play. Oh. My apologies. No problem. 
It's a lot of technology things to juggle. Okay, I think you're set. Great, thank you. Yeah, the green that I chose was not this. I don't know what happened. I can show you. It's actually, it's a much, uh, the, the green is more like, like the green right there on the frame, which is much nicer than this. It's kind of lurid. But at any rate, yeah, so, so thank you for, 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 for the opportunity to, to come here and speak. I, I, do, I do have a slight stutter, so if that gets in the way, just, but um, uh, yeah, so, so, so the, the, the emphasis here is on unanswered. And so, so, so this talk is more sort of, 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 of aspirational in, in that sense. You know, we, we, have, we have lots of plans, uh, 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 Angie and I and the board and such. But, oh, I went the wrong way, sorry. There we go, good. So before I start, I want to give an, an acknowledgement to, to the people who have lived here for, 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 uh, for thousands of years in, in this valley. And we are right there in that star. And uh, April was, uh, was, 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 was always very sp uh, a, a special time. During, during uh, the winter, people would have spread out throughout the valley in small family groups, uh, maybe like one or two uh, f families. And by April, they were, you know, the, uh, their, 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 uh, oh, thank you. You're taller than I am. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, so, so by April, their larder was, was getting empty. And they're probably getting a little tired of, of, of each other as well in those small, but then at that time, all of the, the anadromous fish, all of the seas, you know, all, all the fish would, would, would be coming up the river to spawn. And so you would have thousands and thousands of fish right, right out here, just a few hundred yard, yards away. And so all of the people, hundreds and hundreds of people would come to, to the lower uh, Winooski and and fish and so so they're hungry and they're eager to see family and friends and so on that and that no they hadn't seen for months and they'd all be here in 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 a huge group right outside here and as as i'll talk a bit uh, later on we have uh, uh, evidence here of of occupations go, going back many thousands of years of people who would come here to take it you know in in, in the spring to fish so so I want to start here. So there, there, there have been there's there there have been a lot of holes dug here, but not a lot of stuff written up. And so we have a lot of of of, of artifacts and so on. But this here is is a list of all of the of the, uh, the archaeological pro projects that have happened here over, over a period of about of, of tw twenty years. And this map here here is is the homestead. We are right there. This map sort of shows all the work that has been done across uh, the, the homestead. And, and so I can't talk about all, all of this, but I am going to, 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 to highlight a few of, 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 of the digs that have been do, done here. And so by, by the end, the map should, should all make sense to you. So first, in 79, uh, uh, the Winooski Valley Park d d District hired uh, the University of Vermont to do a, a project here. Uh, and, and the goal was, it was just like a small pro project, but the goal was to try to, to, to understand, uh, oh, should I be talking more in the microphone? Yeah. Oh, oh, okay, great. There you go. Wow, this feels, now okay. professional. Okay, yeah, <laughs> I, I can sing now. Uh, so yeah, so, so, so the goals were one, to find out like how, how did, did the landscape change throughout, throughout its use a, as a farm. Then, then also to see if, if they could find the evidence for any outbuildings and so on, you know, across the, uh, the, the, the land. And then to, to, to understand uh, the, the extent of the archeological um, re, uh, remains at, at the site. So this here is a map of, of the work that, that they did. And I'll explain this more as we go along. The black squares here are what we call sho shovel te te test bits. Or, and I'll, I'll talk about those soon. Now this is, is the house right here. Back then, there was still an L on, on, on the north side of it, which was taken down in 86 or 85, I can't remember, but it was still here at that, at that time. So when you think in terms of, of a dig, this is sort of the, you know, the image we have. This is actually a site in, in Illinois called uh, the, the Coster site. It was done in the 70s before OSHA ever showed up at, at, at a dig. <laughs> but um, 
But so, so, so this is sort of the, you know, you know, you know, the image we have of, of, of a dig. This is not what has happened here, all right? And this is not what the University of uh, Vermont was doing back then. It's more of this, all right? <laughs> And so, so the idea is 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 to get you know is is to uh, be quick and 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 uh, efficient and essentially you're just trying to ask, is there an, uh, anything here? Yes or no? That's that's all that you're you're really trying to do, and you can see they enjoy doing it. But so yeah, so so so, so the holes are maybe like a foot and a half by a foot and a half squares, and they're dug in in in, in a grid. And again, the idea is just you know, presence versus uh, absence. If you do find anything, then you might go on to this. You know, but first it starts with just this. So, but I want to first talk about what is, is um, stratigraphy, okay? Uh, so I went online and I just put, I put, I put the word in because I, 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 I wanted to get an, uh, an, an, an image, and this is the first thing that sh sh showed up. But it, but, but it is, but it's right, because it's, it's layers on top of, 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 of layers, you know? Um, but this is actually more of what I was trying to find. And so this is what you would find, this, this is a natural pro profile, right? So here you have the C horizon, and then the B horizon, and then the A horizon on, on top. And so the C horizon, is the stuff here in, in Vermont, almost all of Vermont is covered with till from, from, from the glaciers, you know? And it's known as, as the parent material. And then up here on A, you have all of the topsoil. This is where you have all of the, you know, the, the organic uh, matter and so on. And it leaches down in to, the, to the B horizon. So this is, is natural, you know? You'll find this in most pl places in Vermont, however, this here is a site that has been worked and re, re, reworked for hundreds of years, if not for, 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 for uh, thousands of years. So what you'll find is perhaps something more of this sort. We have like a wall that has been put in. You have the, the builder's trench, and you have like pits, and there's garbage, and then you have like fill, and then there's the topsoil on top. So it's a lot more, uh, more complicated than this, right? So, Next thing, so this here, this, this is a map to show the results of, of the work from that first pro project. Again, here is the house. And so each of these squares are those small sho sho shovel te test bits that they dug. And so, so, so the colors are to try to show, to try to generalize the, the, you know, the results of, 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 of each of these holes. In this greenish color here, you have you know, the A, B, and C, much more so, something that's closer to, to the natural uh, um, uh, pro, pro, pro profile. In A, they found a lot of, of, um, of uh, you know, the, like, like the s s soil had been worked a lot. It's been changed a lot. There's been a lot of dirt that, you know, that has been moved and fill that, that has been put down. You can also see that, that the, the, the artifacts here are much more mixed. So they go from the 18th through to the, to, the, to, the, to the 20th century. In area C, right here, it was very complicated again. It was mixed a lot. But what they found was a, a, a buried her, her horizon. I'll talk more about that uh, as, 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 we, as we go along. But you see right here in that red, what that means is that was an old surface. And then you had fill that was put on top of it. So it's like capped off, it's sealed in this old surface. And then in area B here, again, it was very complicated and it was, it was, it was mixed and so on. But, but, but you can see in this one hole, you have these, these pit features, right? Where pits were like dug in, perhaps trash was put in there or something. So this is only just a tiny sliver, right? But if you had dug out the whole the, like, like a whole square here, you might see like bell-shaped things, right? So, uh, no, they also dug uh, a, a, a y y y unit that measured about three by five feet up here in, 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 in the corner. And remember, then there was the L on, on the back there. So this here shows the, the profiles to that trench that, that they dug. And you can see there's a lot that's, that is going on here. You have the wall right here, and this is uh, the builder's trench 
from, uh, from that wall. Then you also have these pits that were dug, and the pits were dug before that L was, was, was put in, because you can see how, how, how the trench is like dug in to, to the pits, right? And then on the other side of that s same hole, this is it just three by fi five feet, so like the size of that desk right there, and there's a lot go going on. You also had the, you know, the remains of a, a septic tank. They said it was very wet, so I don't know. But at any rate, so this is now, you know, in, thi in thinking about these pits right here, I want to, uh, you know, this is our idea of, uh, of garbage today, right? So this old guy here, he's got a bag that probably goes back to may uh, maybe like the last week or two of, 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 of his trash, or maybe he, he had like a big party the, the night before and it's just like the, like the one night or something. But it's in that bag, he's got this like sealed co context, right? He's got one event that's all held in that one bag. In the same way, these pits are so, sort of like a sealed context, you know, whereas this right here is all mixed up. These things here are, are these sort of, these like intact pa packages of time that might go back or maybe over a year or three years or something of that sort, you know. So just keep that in mind when you, as we talk about this. Now, I want to also talk about, in, in talking about the work that, uh, that the University of, of, uh, of uh, Vermont had here to talk about ceramics. As you can see, uh, our archaeologists love to talk about these, you know, and why are these so important? Like, why are they so obsessed with, with these? So I wanted to talk about that just real quickly. Now, throughout most of, you know, in the, in, in, in the 18th and into the, to the 19th century, you know, s simple earthenware bowls, as you can see in like the bottom corner there, this was like the standard thing that was used. All, all of this stuff was made lo 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 locally. You know, it was cheap and, uh, you know, but uh, this is what we especially like to find, are nice tea, tea sets and so on, as you can see up there. Now, this might seem a bit sort of uh, incongruous. Why are there all these tea sets at a farm that, you know, in, in the 18th century so on was on, you know, it was on uh, the, the frontier? And you can see because tea was very important, you know, and, and you see here in this painting here, what, what are they doing? They're holding the cups up in front. You say, you see what we got? You know what I mean? And so it was very important to them. I don't know if that's how the Allens dressed or looked in their house, but, but, but tea was still Im important to, to them and so on, you know. And uh, I forgot what the next thing was. Oh, yeah, this is actually in my house. And so this is the hutch in our house, all right? And I have this, this, you know, this image here to show that, you know, our house would, if we were to move, I bet it would take like an 18-wheeler truck. Okay, we have a huge amount of stuff, right? And uh, when I first met, uh, met my wife, I could fit everything in the trunk of a car. And 25 <laughs> years later, it would take a truck. But at any rate, but we have this, you know, this hutch here. All right, and this, is, this would probably fit in just like a couple of, of uh, boxes. And, but we never really use this stuff. But we have it up there in, in uh, our di di dining room, the uh, cr crystal here. And I can never, Waldorf, Waterford? That's it, right, yeah. So I'd never heard, heard of it before, but when we got m m married, my wife was like, well, we have to have it on our uh, re re registry. I was like, well, why? But she did, I, I don't wanna like, actually, sh she isn't here, but she might see this all. But at any rate, so, and I swear, I don't think I've used these in like a quarter of a century. I don't think I've ever actually used these. But so my point is ju just is that, is that uh, archeologists put a lot of effort and focus onto these things, right? But how much were these things actually used, right? But how important w w w were they? We have these out in front in our house. You can all see them, but we don't really use them. You know what I mean? So it's just something to keep, keep in mind when you look at these, at, at these objects here. This is the stuff that was used, you know, not, not that. So, so oh, there's more about cer cer ceramics, sorry. So um, yeah, so there are a lot of types there are so many types, and uh, many of these were made within a very tight sort of time frame, and so they get used a lot to date sites. You know what I mean? Because they're 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 very, uh, and so what I have here is like these are some of like the uh, 
the domain types, right? Now within creamware and per pearlware, there are numerous like subtypes, but these are like the, the domain types, and this is sort of the spread of when they, that they were being made, right? Um, Oh, and here, that's a creamware. You see it's got like a bit, a bit, a bit of a tinge of ye 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 yellow. That's per pearlware. There's a little blue from, from the cobalt. And then that is, 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 is whiteware. Now, I have this up here to show you this. Now, remember the, uh, you know, the, the buried her her horizon that I sh sh showed you. So that has creamware and per pearlware in it, which means it probably dates to around the time that, that, you know, that the Allens were, were here. And that pit that I showed you in the profile there also dates, you know, has creamware and pearlware in it. So it probably also dates that same time period as well to like the late 18th and the early uh, 19th centuries. So, wait. Oh yeah, one last thing about Ceramics. You see, like we love this stuff. This is what our archaeologists spend a lot of time on this stuff. So this here is a chart. There was a study that 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 was done to try to price ceramics at the time when when they were when they're first coming out when they're first when when like these new types were were no, no, no were being made in in the 18th and and in the uh, in the 19th century and then they made an index to try to like chart how 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 expensive each of these things were and so the green are plates the red are like tea, tea cups and the black are are bowls but what but in this study here they're they're comparing you got tenant farmers which are these at least according to to google and then there's also this is from a log cabin from 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 uh, a uh, fr frontier home. This is a glass factory, and here is a, a tavern. And so these are each of the types that that, that are mapped here. So what it sh shows is you see like the the uh, you know like the tea sets and the plates and so on they had were not that expensive as opposed to the tavern where they had much more expensive wares, right? And but what what it also shows is 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 is, is the function. So. They, that they were poor, but the tea sets were still very important to them, right? Up here at the tavern, the tea sets were not that important, but the plates were important. You know what I mean? And as you can see, I like this p p picture here because it has the plates up, like the plates are up there, and like the plates and so on were, were up in, in, in the hutch in, 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 in our house. Oh, why did, oh yeah, now I remember I, why, why, why I put this up. Actually, I left my notes at home, so I was like, on the way over, I was like, oh, so at any rate, um, so the uh, so this again is our hutch, and you see, there you see how none of these match, right? Now I know that that's because my wife likes to collect teacups, tea you know, but I know. But if you were to find this in in an archaeological context, you've got all this mixture. Why is it all mixed, you know? And I've worked at sites. I remember, like I worked at a farmstead way up in in, in, in mountains in uh, in uh, New Hampshire. And the homestead was dated like eight, like in the in the 1840s or so, but the uh, the cups were all mismatched and they dated to the end of the, the of the 18th century. So what did you have? You had a poor ha household. They still had to have it, you know, their their you know, their tea sets, right? But it was much older and it didn't match. They were just trying to find a cup here, a cup here, a saucer there, and so on like that. So you can use that. Mm, the 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 mixture to try to interpret what might have been happening in that in that household. So again, these are all things that we can th think about as we look at the 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 uh, the assemblage from here at e Ethan Allen. Now I've talked a lot. I've used the word mixture a lot, right? What what does mixture mean in in terms of of archaeology? Now. The ideal for an archaeologist. This is from Pompeii. This is is uh, is uh, from from King Tut's tomb. These are sites that happened in a day, right? Maybe it was a few hours, and these guys went and they put all the stuff in here. This was buried under ash in like in, in a day. So these are sealed, intact sort of context. They're not mixed. This right here is mixture, right? All these cars are mixed. This right here is a de de dealership for Honda. They're all from 2018. It's not mixed. Now, when you think of mixture in terms of um, archaeology, you're like, we all want this. It's, it's really fun and neat and so on. But 
but with, 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 with mixture, though, you ask, like, why are all the cars mixed? You know, so you can ask, like, how come the, the, uh, the, the, the profiles, the stratigraphy and so on, at e. Ethan Allen, why did, did it become so mixed? And so we, so, so we need to try to, to, to unscramble and to unravel the story of, like, why this stuff, how, how, how did it be, become mixed so that it's this and not that? You know what I mean? So that we can then tell the, the, you know, the story and the history of, of uh, the landscape here. Um, all right, so in s summary then, this again, no, this is, is a picture of the house, I think about from uh, 1900 or so, and you can see it's got a porch here on the s side of the house. Here's the porch right here, again, here is the L, and here are all the holes that, that they dug, and what they found is they're, they're uh, the, the, inter ter the, inter the interpretation is that, you had a door right here, and people would go and throw their trash out the door. From a, so you know, like Fanny Allen and so on, would like throw her trash out, 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 out the door. And then about the porch was built about 1830, 18 to 20 or so. So what that meant is all of that stuff there was capped; it was sealed off, right? And the porch was then taken down about 1950 or so. All right, so that means perhaps that the stuff in here was more intact, you know, um, in terms of trying to find something from that time period. Um, now this is just, I was just, I saw this, this, and I was thinking like this here is Fanny Allen as she throws the stuff out of her ba back door. I just like this image here, you know, so <laughs> you throw, throw, throwing garbage, because you know, ideas of trash, whoops, sorry. So ideas of trash were, were, were quite different back then, it was just put, put it out, 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 out in the yard, so at any rate, so that, now the next dig I wanted to talk about was, was again, the Winooski Valley Park District asked uh, uh, the University of Vermont to, to come out here in 88, and they did a lot of work, uh, there, there, there was all, all of this, all, all of uh, this development was proposed for this pro property here. So you can see it was a long list of things. And the idea was to have the University of Vermont out here to like test and to see if, these, if, if, if uh, this proposed work might have an adverse impact on, on, um, on, on, on any intact uh, uh, you know, parts of, of the archeological site. So this here is a map, and I'll, I'll explain this all as we go along. This, this is a map. That, that that's in the the, the in the report, and uh, like their main goal was again to, to to try to to better understand the history of of the landscape here, and they use again uh, uh, STPs as I talked about. They also did a surface co collection in here, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And they did what's called a plowed furrow in here, and I'll I'll explain that as well. So what they also did is they looked at a lot of historic maps, go, you know, f go, go, going back as far as as as, um, as they could. These are maps. I don't know if you if you all know about the Walling and Beers maps. They're they're excellent maps that were done throughout uh, the Northeast, and they map in like every like home. They have like a name of the home. You'll see it'll say like if it's a school or if it's like a blacksmith shop or all, all that stuff. They're great maps. There's nothing on here about the Ethan Allen homestead. It's blank. There isn't even a road there, which is odd. You know I, why? Because I mean, we know the house was here, and so in 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 the report they say, well, perhaps because it was tenant farmers saying account. I don't know. Maybe the house was was abandoned at that time. I don't I don't know. Um, but uh, but uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah, but it, it would be good to know more about like what was the methodology that Beers and w w Walling used such that it might be blank here, you know. Um, now this here is, again, is, is a map of, of the work they did. They found uh, um, some barn foundations here. I don't know why they're on the slope. The map might be off a bit, I, I don't know. Um, and again, the, these are the STPs that, that they dug. And uh, this is where they did the, the surface co collection. Here is the furrow trench. Now, what is a 
surface co collection. So you plow the field, which I don't think they did here, which is a little weird. But anyway, but so 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 you plow the field. You would only use this 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 uh, te technique if it was in a field that that you know, that was plowed, right? Uh, you know that that you know, that had been plowed for, for for years. And you then go and you would plow it. What that means, it churns up all of the artifacts and so on that that are in there. And then you walk in like a you know like you keep like a, a pace apart and you go out there and you just sort of can plot out what's on on the ground um, and uh, it you find with plows it'll move things uh, ver vertically but they don't move that far in terms of, of uh, hor horizontally but maybe only a few feet and this uh, they're, they're, they're also doing a sur <laughs> surface collection. I was actually once doing a sur surface co collection in a field, and we looked over, and there's a whole herd of turkeys in a neat row. We're like, look, they're also doing one too. So. <laughs> Anyways, and this is, is, is a plowed furrow technique. And so, it is when, so, so when you plow, there's like a trench that is dug in on one side, and it goes down to the bottom of the plow zone. And the idea is that it will uh, re reveal stains in the soil surface there. And so one can then go and, you know, in this little, little row right here, see if there's stains from like post molds or pits or, or things of that sort. And, and then, and then, uh, and then, and then uh, explore them. So they did that to try to see if, if there are any features there from, from, from structures and so on. And what they found was they did find uh, some foundations here and here. They also found a pit feature in here as well. And so here are 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 now they, they so so they found about about a thousand or so uh, uh, artifacts, but they never did an, an an analysis of them. I don't I don't know why. Um, I think they ran out of money. But at any rate, so. So that's all. I think that this, that the collection here is all sitting and in uh, the in, in the uh, University of of of, of uh, Vermont, but it hasn't ever been an analyzed. So these here are the the conclusions from their work in in eighty eight. Again, it's a lot of what they found out in seventy nine, which is that there's a wide range of artifacts here like sp spread out. There's, there's a lot of uh, mixture here, but there are some intact uh, a areas as well uh, with, with artifacts that date from the late 18th through to the 20th century. And I should add also g going back over, over uh, 5,000 years ago as well. But, uh, and so they're spread out throughout the, the property with, with the most dense areas being like around the house, you know, closest to the house. But there's been, a, but but the uh, the landscape has been heavily re, re, reworked as you, you you would expect on on, on a farm that has been worked. Uh, but they say like we need a lot more uh, history done to to understand you know a lot a lot more searching in 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 the records and such. So I want to talk a bit about where like where 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 we might go from here, right? And um, I'm going to start with this idea of sheet middens. Right, so a midden is you know a pile of trash. Right, a sheet midden is just a pile of trash that's been spread out in a sheet, is is the idea. Now this this is a farm uh, in Kentucky and uh, hi historic farm. As you can see, it's really neat. The grass is nicely cut. I don't think it looked anything like this in the, in the 18th and the uh, 19th century. It was muddy. I'm sure there was there was what we would call gar garbage. In, Everywhere, there were sheet middens just spread out all over here in the back. Here, there was you know trash, right? But this, of course, is is the image that we have of a nice wholesome home, homestead, you know. Um, so, but so what are are, are the possible or origins of, of 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 a sheet midden? And I br bring this up because what what you know, what we have out there is largely a sheet midden, you know, sp spread out throughout the uh, the uh, the. Uh, the property. Um, one thing again is Fanny Allen throwing the trash out her back door. That's one way in which in which it happens, um, and this is probably the way that most of the garbage here came from, which is it was sp spread out, it was thrown out, and so on. And over time, it gets plowed in, animals pe peck at it, it gets spread out, and so on like that. 
Another thing which is, 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 is interesting, although I don't know if it happened here, but um, is the night soil men. I don't know if you've ever heard of these guys. They don't exist anymore, thankfully. But what, what would happen is you, know, you have, a, a, you have these, uh, these, these privies, and th this guy here is, 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 is a night soil man in England in about 1880. And can you see him? Sorry. And so these guys would go around, they would empty out the privies at night. They would put them in, into trucks and they would c c cart them out to farms outside of, 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 of cities. And they would spread out all of the waste that was in the privies across the fields, right? Now that, that can lead to, to, to a sheet min because of what people put in there. It wasn't just you know, hu human waste. They'd also throw glass and shards of pots and cups and so on like that in there. Now I don't really know the, uh, you know, um, the, the uh, physics involved in, in, in uh, hu human waste, but in general what happens is that if you put like glass and so on in there, it'll help it to, to percolate down more. I don't know whoever did the, the uh, study in this, but, but so that's why, so they would throw stuff in there and it would make the pit last longer, essentially. But so, so, so what might happen then is that he would go put all that waste in, 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 into his truck, go out to, to a farm outside of, of London or something like that, and then throw that waste in the fields, then it would get spread out there, so you'd have a sheet midden of waste that actually came from, from somewhere in, 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 uh, in uh, London or Philly or, or whatever. I don't know if that happened here. It's just something to think about. You know, I don't know if, you know, you know Bur Burlington is small. I don't know if it was the same type of, of issue, but it's, but it's a neat story, and it's and he's and he's quite a, a character there. I I I don't, I don't know how far the the photographer had to stand away from him. But <laughs> anyways, um, yeah, I know. It's so the other thing I wanted to talk, to talk about again is the idea of, of, of garbage. You know, so we're talking about sheet middens and so on. And so again, like th th this actually looks a lot like a house nearby where I live uh, in, in Jer Jericho. And I see this and I, I see trash, you know. I'm like, it, it, it's an eyesore, you know. But perhaps to him, there's a lot of spare parts in those cars. There's a lot of, you know, spare stuff, nuts, bolts, I, I don't know. I think that this is actually trash, but at any rate, but, but, but my point is that, is that we see trash, but, but to them, you know, 100 to 200 years ago, there might have been a lot of, of, of things to use in that, in that trash. However, so, so we talked about Fanny Allen, like throwing her trash out the, uh, out the back door, and that is the way things were, you know, were done. However, by like the middle of the 19th century, you saw that in uh, farming was was being taught now in schools. There are a lot of ag j journals that that you know and 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 a lot of books and so on that that were being written to teach people this is how you are supposed to farm. This is the right w way to do it. You don't want to look like that. You know, you want a nice clean farm. Here's how to do it. I've read s s some of them. If I was a farmer and I read that book, or I was I would probably not be very you know. Uh, uh, I, I wouldn't like to, 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 to hear it. I'm sure I'd have some cho cho choice words. But they had this idea that you had what, no, no, what was called farmer thrifty. And you see he's got a, everything is neat. All the animals are fat and they're shiny and it's just a nice place, right? And then you got farmer slack, <laughs> right? And you can see how everything is a mess and it's bro broken down and so, so on like that. So the idea is, you know, be like farmer thrifty, you know? And so, so there was a lot of, of um, resentment and so on about the, these ideas. However, things did change. And you do find that farming, that things are cleaner, you know, they are neater, you know, the way, the, the way in which trash and such is, is, is dealt with, it does change during the course of, of, of the 19th century. Um, so, 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 so the next pr project I wanted to talk about was a pro project that was led by, by, by a grad student from Bo Boston U from 89 to uh, 93. And actually, I met s s somebody who was there. Was, any, was anybody else here there? Right, right, yeah, she was there. So I, I, I have to talk to you afterwards. That's OK. But, 
Uh, so she dug here for four years as part of her grad program. However, she, she never finished the, uh, uh, her, 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 her degree. And so there's about 60 boxes, I think. Seventy boxes upstairs in in the attic of all the stuff. So we have all of her notes. I'm sorry. It's a lot. It is a lot. It is a lot. And you can see a lot. I think all the stuff here is for, from there. And you can see there there, there are four pi pictures over there from uh, her her project. And so so what so what we're trying to do now is well we're we're, we're, we're we're not trying. We are doing it. We're g g going through the the. Uh, I, I bought the first box of bags, and so we're going to go through all of them and bag them all and, and make uh, a, a, a di digital da 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 database, and then we're going to submit them to the, uh, to the, uh, to, to the Heritage Center in Barrie, and then perhaps make like an, 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 an exhibit or something here that would he, he, he incorporate the, uh, these finds. And so, so that's the goal. It's going to take a long time. It's a lot of work, and uh, 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 Angela's going to help 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 out there. So, as I said, I bought the first box of bags to start the process. Okay, and can I ask a question? sure. As you begin to examine these items, would you be able to tell us contents, date, and name of the item? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. You That'll be. You wouldn't know what it. Oh yeah, yeah. No, we ha well. A lot of that work ha has been been done. It's just not. It's not. It, it's all. It's all on on paper. And so, so we want to have it in in a digital uh, da 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 database. But yeah, that is the idea. And then to try to uh, to like reduce all 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 of that to to a story. You know, to to a report that can can be used and and accessed and so on. So that, that's the idea. But yeah, so, so that we can then have it up so other, uh, uh, others can learn from the work that you are uh, in, in, in involved in and so on. Um, but these here, these are, are where she, she, she dug. This is correct, right? This is where, where, where it was? Yeah, yeah, because I had, I, it, it was hard to find the map, but I was able to find the map. But at any rate, so she dug about 49 square me uh, meters, but not she, it was her and her helpers. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and uh, I bet she like stood and told you all well, what to do, and you, you, you all did the actual digging. <laughs> yeah, you have plenty of directions. Yes, <laughs> that's that's what 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 happens. So, anyway, so that's um, so the next thing. The, so, so the last thing here I wanted to talk about was uh, where where was more about where we might go in in uh, in the future. Now, this here here is 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 the homestead. All of these red dots are known sites, uh, what, uh, what, uh, what we call like pre-contact sites. So sites meaning before uh, white s s settlements. So there's a lot here. And, uh, and you can see like the, the river has moved around a great deal. You see all the oxbows and so on. So I bet that there were more sites here in the past, but they've been like, you know, taken away by, by the uh, r r r river. Some of these were, were, were probably on the river when, 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 when there were people there, but now it's moved. And so I think it, it would be a great opportunity to, to, um, you know, to, to tell the story of uh, this site within the context of the whole lower uh, um, Winooski Valley, you know, uh, since you know, there were people here for, you know, for, for thousands of years. Um, now the other thing to, to talk about here is that over the course of this, of the use of this farmstead, farming evolved a great deal in, in Vermont. So when, so when, when the Allens were here, this is, you know, and, uh, I, don't, I don't know where that's from, but it's, um, but, but, you know, so, so the idea is that it was, um, you know, you had, you had, you had a smaller farm. They, they were, they, that they were more uh, subsistence farming. They're more attached to like to, to, to the local e economy. They're probably involved much more in barter and trade uh, as opposed to like buying things and s s selling things. So, so the market that they were attached to was much more local, right? And then throughout the course of the, of the 19th century, you had sheep farming. Like we've all heard, I guess, about the sheep craze, right? And so in, dur during the first half of, of, the, uh, of the 19th century, 
you know, the whole state was covered with sheep. All, you know, like all the woods were t t taken down. It was just sheep everywhere. And so, and then, but then that evolved towards the end of the, of the 19th century into, uh, into dairy farming. And then you had trains, and you had trains which had uh, re refrigerated cars. So they're able to sell, you know, milk, cheese, and, but and but butter and so on to markets, you know, in, in, in Boston and stuff. And so that meant that, that farms here in Vermont were, were, were then attached to a much wider, you know, to, 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 to a nationwide uh, uh, market. So you had that whole kind of change over the course of like 100 years. You know, so, so the story of the farm here might present an opportunity to sort of to, to track and see that, 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 that evolution over time. There's also, there's been a lot of work done on farmsteads throughout in, in Vermont and in, in uh, New Hampshire and in New York. And so the farmstead here, I read somewhere that this is actually the, you know, the largest uh, ceramic uh, uh, assemblage from any farmstead site in, 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 in the state. But it does present a lot of, of opportunity for comparison with, you know, with, you know, with other farmstead sites. Um, and then also, I want to find out why it's not on these maps. I think that that's uh, an, an interesting question as well. Actually, I was t t talking t t to my w w wife about this. She's like, well, you should find out before you give the talk. I'm like, I don't, I don't got the time right now. I can't do this, you know, whatever. But uh, so, and then also, I think that, that we have an opportunity here to t talk about the, uh, about the, you know, the changing uh, l l landscape here. Now, when we think of like the pre-contact world, we tend to, tend to think of old growth forests, right? So you see these big white, white pines here and stuff. But actually, I don't know if that's how things would, uh, would have been in, in, in the valley here. Th th this here is a map of the Connecticut ri uh, a River where it cuts through in Massachusetts. And if you see just about every town here has the word field at the end of it. Now why, you know, why is that? When the English first came up here in, in the middle of uh, the uh, 17th s century, everywhere they came, it was open fields. And it was open fields because people for, tha for thousands of years had shaped that whole, you know, the, the landscape there into fields. And they had a, num a number of, of uh, reasons and so on. But I think it would, you know, like here, you know, we, here we might have an opportunity to see about that, you know, to tell that story here as well. Um, now this is from, from a book from about 1850, and it shows the, the evolution of a farmstead. I think this is supposed to be in Massachusetts, but this is a lot like what I bet happened here. And so it, it would be an, an opportunity to, 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 like tell, to, to tell that story here. So this might have been, you know, when, when the Allens first came here. And then, and then it, you know, it, it sort of expands. They clear more. T Ten years later, they've cleared a lot more. It's looking clean and so on. And then by, by half a, s a century l l later, everything is cleared off, you know. And uh, one, I, I love these right here. This is from, for, uh, from the Harvard Forest, from the Museum for, you know, for the Harvard Forest. And these are um, from, from, uh, from dioramas that they have. And you know, it shows the same thing. So you can see the area here when it's first being cleared, then when, you know, when, it, when it's all cleared and it all would have been sheep and such. And here they talk about the farm having been abandoned by, by the middle of the 19th century. But, but, but I think that you know, we have an, an opportunity here to like do the same sort of thing to like track the, you know, you know, the history of the landscape here, both in like the broad sense, but also in, in the very specific sense of just this one, home, the, you, know, you know, the one home, homestead here. So anyway, that's, I'm right on 45 minutes. That's perfect. Wow, I'm good. That's great. Okay. So thank you. Thanks.